News with Gina Gina. The news with Gina Grad. Well, this is still breaking, so much uh, more information, I'm sure, is to come. But my God, if this doesn't sound like a movie plot, I don't know what does. The FBI has uncovered a plot by an armed militia in Michigan to kidnap Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer, according to Fox News. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel filed 19 state felony charges against seven people known to be members of the Wolverine Watchmen. The suspects are now under arrest. They're alleged to have called on the group's members to identify the home addresses of law enforcement officers in order to target them. Trump they tweeted made, out he likes them, but he doesn't know anything about them. <laughs> right. Stand stand by. Uh, made he liked of Red violence. Dawn. So, you know, Wolverines. <laughs> made threats of violence to instigate a civil war leading to a societal collapse and engaged in the planning and training for an operation to attack the state capitol building and kidnap government officials, including Governor Whitmer. I also heard on the radio right before the show they were planning to bomb the bridge that goes to Whitmer's vacation home and, like, capture her and kidnap her there. I mean, this this is a movie. Is it... Uh... I don't know if this factored into their plot, but she's kind of hot, right? She's a nice, she's a handsome woman. Yeah, I don't know how old she is, but she's, she's, she, I think she's fairly easy on the eyes. Yeah, I Where hope that got, didn't factor in. Well, it could. Let's see. Oh, no. Yeah. What are they going to do with her? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> look, you already, you look, you get caught, you never see the light of day anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. And for a penny and for a pound. Oh, that's right. Jeez. Is she, uh, and, and uh, where 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 are we with the name Gretchen? I think it's kind of a hot name. Mm. Do, you, do we like Gretchen? Is it old? Is it hot? Nobody names their kid Gretchen anymore. But I like no. I like the name Gretchen. I had I think I went to junior high with maybe a Gretchen or yeah. two. Everybody went to junior high with a Gretchen, and it's they're a, and they're gone now. It's an in between <laughs> name. It's not really an old timey name like Elizabeth or yeah, you know, Lily, Lily or something like that. It's not a new timey name. It's a it's a caught in between name. So yeah. no one's interested. So people want new names and old names. We don't want middle names. I mean, middle right. of the road, middle era names. You know, so uh, yeah, I think she's attractive. Again, yeah. I'm not saying I'm factoring it in, but. Uh, the could, Duch could was married fun. to a Gretchen. Yeah, he was. And she right. was pretty hot. All right. Yeah. yeah I, that's you know right. what I remember about her? all I remember about her? What? Hmm. <laughs> Danny Bonaducci. My wife, size zero. Oh. Zero. Like you kept he'd always kept saying size zero. And I was like, I I don't know why zero is attractive. I get you don't want to size nineteen, but I don't know. I'm not you know, I'm not fucking Vera Wang, so I don't know that much about the the woman's dress design. But I size size zero sounds, I don't know, maybe a little too wafy to me. Like I, that like, is the greatest story I have ever heard. Size zero, he would say that all. That's all I remember about her. Size zero. Well, <laughs> Sorry, that was a Gretchen. So- it will uh will will keep you updated. I mean, it just it it sounds too insane to be real, but they did foil the plot that was that was right around the corner. So we covered the debates pretty well, but we didn't cover this uh this oddity out of China. China censors cut off Vice President Mike Pence mid sentence during the debate when he called out Chinese the Chinese Communist Party for its mishandling of the coronavirus. Um, and it literally just went to, uh, you know, went to the the what's it called? The color screen, uh, yeah. you know, um, I wonder so if they Pence- use an Indian in China. We used to use <laughs> an right. Indian here on the color like the That's right. done test pattern, the test pattern. We had an Indian head. Do you remember that, Brian? Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, that. Yeah. It looked like a nickel kind of with the colors in the. Buttons. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I wish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, who used the Indian head? You know, we do need. You know what? Our, our, you know, you know, there is no more. I'll tell you what there used to be. TV used to force you to go to bed at a certain time. Like That's right now, I can fucking sit in front of my seventy-five inch TV <laughs> and watch any Super Bowl that ever happened, like right. soup to nuts, or watch mm-hmm. you know any episode of The Simpsons. I want to watch. Back then, back in the day. You know, you'd watch, you know, during the week, especially, you know, TV would end. 
It was like, Letterman they, is done. Uh, it's 1.30 in the morning. You're going to fucking bed because we're they done. Play the nas- they play the national anthem. Right. And then the test pattern would come on. The test pattern would come on. And then you'd be sitting there going, well, I guess it's time to go to bed. There's nothing <laughs> else to do. I'm sure as fuck not going to read. So I'm going to bed. And yeah. and now there is no cutoff anymore. There's no more no, telling you. Not even close. The, the one, the, there was that. There was that poem read by the pilot. They'd show the they'd show the fighter jet going up into the sky, and they talk about touching the face of God, and they oh, play this like really patriotic good. music. Yeah, Kaylin, see if you can find. We played it before. <laughs> it was like it's the sign off. I guess television sign off fighter jet poem or something and and i remember sitting at like my buddy ray like his mom's apartment in north hollywood going well i guess it's time to walk home and go to bed <laughs> like i it's bedtime there's nothing else on so who flinched first what network said you know what there's a whole ground that we're not covering from you know midnight to five in the morning and this is just we're just wasted and then everybody else freaked out and had to get on board well the thing was basically it was loosely based on the booze schedule of a 7-eleven or circle k or even a even the hollywood even the denny's in hollywood like any place that was open 24 hours which is we stopped selling beer at 2 a.m but we'll start again at 6 a.m. Right. So, when the shows come back. Right. right. So they would sign off at like 2 a.m. And then like the farm report would come on at like 530 or something. You, you know you're in bad shape if you ever pushed through to whatever the offerings were in the morning. Because that's not something you wanted to watch if you stayed up all night and you were drunk. All right. The classic sign off. High flight. Probably the mid seventies. This is what I'd see. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter's silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sunsplit clouds. Sitting on Ray's mom's sofa in North Hollywood at you have not dreamed of. at one fifty-seven on a weeknight, going, Ugh, gotta go back to the garage. Go back to my cot mattress. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Maybe I'll rub one out. There, I think I'll rub one out. Shouting wind along and I should do it at home, though. I don't want to do it in Ray's mom's apartment. That's yeah, weird. I've never seen this. Oh, yeah, they'd sign off with this thing. This is a slightly different version than the one I remember. Who's doing the narration? Lauren Green? That name, or John Fresenda or whatever from the NFL films? It's, it's, it's Orson it, Welles. Is it? No. Oh, I don't well, know. Although he, he did sell out toward the end of his, his life. So, probably. Well, this is considered your patriotic duty. That's <laughs> true. I topped the windswept heights with easy grace. I swear to God, so, this guy just the NFL stuff. It's got a little John Fresenda in it. Yeah. And while with silent lifting mind. I've yeah, it could be him. He's going to touch the face of God in a second. Put out my hand and touched the face of God. I'm like, all right, I'm walking home. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that going up. This is so fucking depressing. I have nowhere to go. I have no money. I have nothing to do tomorrow. I'm just going to fucking go home, beat off, and sleep until one in the afternoon, and then I'll come back. We'll watch a Letterman tomorrow. That'll be it. That was our that was our line. Uh, who do you think did that VO? Sounded like John Facenda from uh, NFL Films. All right, what else we got, Gina Graham? Uh, celebrities are getting naked to encourage you to vote. Not sure if you've seen this yet. Sarah Silverman, Chris Rock, Mark Ruffalo, Chelsea Handler, and others appear in a new PSA about naked ballots, which refers to mail-in ballots that aren't properly filled out or returned in the correct way, uh, in the correct envelope. The video was produced by an organization called Represent Us and is intended to help mail-in voters make their vote count. It's about two minutes. Feel free to wrap it up anytime you want. Here's the beginning. I'm naked. I am completely butt ass naked. I'm naked. I'm like naked. There isn't a man behind me. These are my hands. Why you want me to be naked? 
I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ruffalo, um, put your clothes on. To be honest, I wish I could cover my hands with my boobs, but here we are. I'm here to talk to you about voting. Did you know that ballots could be naked? And if you don't do exactly what I tell you, your ballot could get thrown out. This is uh, my ballot, just got it. First of all, when your ballot comes, you're supposed to read the instructions. Read and all right, follow hold the on. instructions that come. It's called, they, your ballot. they use what's called a mail sack. Maybe we get a little sack <laughs> worked into this. Uh, oh. A little scrotum <laughs> worked into this action. <laughs> A little mail sack. sack. Yeah, you know, it'd be a funny goof is to like not really have a campaign, but go to celebrities and see what you could get them to do. (laughs) Now, you'd have to pick something like, you know, voting or pediatric AIDS or something, you know, something that kind of inspired them and then see like it's like it's back sack for pediatric AIDS. We film just the back of your scrotum, you know, tastefully. And then we lay your voice over. (laughs) (laughs) We will lay your voice over. I just wonder like who we could who first off, I, I think it's always based on who did it first. So if you go to like Chris Rock and you go, hey, take your shirt off, man. We want to film you doing this thing. He'd go, huh? And then you'd go, oh, no, we got Sarah Silverman and Chelsea yeah, and Handler. Schumer. And then we got Schumer. And then they go, oh, OK. So you'd have to tell right. the celebrity, the other celebrities that, of course, you didn't contact were in for back the sack. This I is have a- Mm. I have an alternate uh, pitch mm, mm. for, you know, how um, like racially biased standardized testing has been kind of a hot subject. Mm-hmm. Testies for testing. Testies for testing. We, we got uh, we got Ruffalo on board. We got Clooney. Mm-hmm. We got all the big names. And then we just tell them we just film. We just you can film it yourself again. Tasteful back sack, whatever that means to you. And then we just lay. We'll just lay your voice in over over it. The poem sign-off voice actor is whom? William Conrad. William Conrad. Oh. That's canon. That's canon. Do you know who William Conrad is? Mm-mm. Who? William Conrad. No, I, don't know what, well, I don't know what canon is. Canon was a 70s cop show, detective show, all those 70s, you know, the, just a one-name stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was also in... Uh, Jake and the Fat Man, or whatever. Which one was he? <laughs> I feel like in the pictures, I can, pretty, I, pretty, I, can, I can guess. It also says he was a fighter pilot, so maybe that's why he did it. Was he? It says a World War II fighter pilot, actor, producer, director, uh, detective series, Canon. Find the opening to Canon. I mean, Canon drove around a, a large LTD, and uh, it was funny. I can't remember if it was a Leno joke, but... In those series, like Barney, oh God, Buddy Epson, Buddy Epson played Barnaby Jones, had Barnaby Jones and there was Cannon. So Buddy Epson played an old detective and Cannon played a fat detective, right? And Leno had this joke is like the first guy who would, the first goon to get his ass kicked would be the first guy to call to call Barnaby Jones old or to call Cannon fat. Like the first street thug that called him fat, they'd always the first one to get their ass kicked. Like the first one to die on Star Trek would always be the new crew member. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't recognize that guy. Then later, you know, the monster lands on his head and chews, chews it off. But yeah, that was William Conrad. That right. big actor, big 50s, 70s actor, probably... Probably died in the uh, in the early eighties or late ninety four. Oh, yeah, a decent run. Out for a while. How old? How old was he? Uh, say seventy four. I think he was born in nineteen twenty. He had, uh, yeah, he had that big voice, and uh, oh. the beginning of Canon. Uh, yeah, so you guys don't remember all those. You guys missed the whole era of bad detective single name. Shows, yeah, all that stuff, and you know, again, we had to watch TV until it was time for the F fourteen Tomcat to touch the face of God, and we had to go home. But whatever was on, you had to watch it. You you couldn't just go fuck Cannon. It was like (laughs) Cannon's what's on. You must Mm -hmm. watch Cannon. So you just watch, you just watch Cannon, and we'll see if we can watch it. Yeah, fat, fat (laughs) cat. (laughs) 
Imagine any 13-year-old watching Cannon. Starring William Conrad. Fat guy looking at stuff. If you're fat and you got a mustache, Cannon is your show. Montage, driving cannon, walking cannon, kicking ass cannon. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> never eating cannon. <laughs> for, you know, for some reason, I'm sure the ladies loved him too. It's just a lot of him walking through lobbies of hotels with yeah, purpose. I was just saying, this intro is an enticing me to keep watching. It's like, oh, this guy walks. You didn't need to be enticed. What were your choices? Where are you, where are you going? We where dare else you to turn go? this off. You go binge watch uh, Stranger Things on Netflix? Douche, you got nowhere to go, bitch. You watch us. That, that, it's a cop. De- it's a detective. It's an action detective show. But the entire montage is him walking in a blazer. <laughs> looking concerned. Come on. Well, really- no car chase. No nothing. From a really unfortunate camera angle, it's all jowl. It's all jowl. Yeah, the guy, the guy got down. He he did not have a selfie stick. They put the Mm-mm. they had a belt buckle camera, and it was just him and his big jowls walking through like a casino, oh, and they right. just film him. Ugh, <laughs> that is not enticing. What oh, year was Canon? What like nineteen seventy four to nineteen seventy seven or something like that? 71 to 76. Well, oh, good de- run. Decent run. Yeah, I was I was a kid, but it was like, what are you going to watch Canon? What are you going to do? Are you going to read? Are you going to stare at a ceiling fan? Well, what, what I'd are your like options? to see a try. What are your options? Go ahead. Watch Canon. All right. Sorry. I'm afraid to ask, but did Canon have like a hook? Like, he's a detective, but, you know what I mean? Has, like, what was his- He has adult onset diabetes. <laughs> You he can, lost a foot. You can read the the description of Canon. Canon, I don't remember like like so Telly Savalas would his he had a couple of like hooks. He had he had a bomb pop. He'd always have a Tootsie Roll pop in his mouth. Mm-hmm. And then at some point he'd pull it out and he'd go, Who loves you, baby? And I don't know. Okay. We were we, we, we were we were living in such a vacuum of entertainment that you'd watch the entire episode of uh what was telly savalas's uh, show kojak. Yeah. kojak kojak another single name thing right you watch the whole thing and at the very end when they're cuffing the guy and like putting him into the back of the squad car he turn and go who loves you baby and you go yeah he, said it. he did it he did it <laughs> he does the like, thing he does every episode he does that thing that. Who does the Who Loves You, baby? And he had a sucker in his mouth. Ooh, this is prime entertainment. I've never been more entertained in my life. Yeah, it's just stupid. You'd have a stupid little hook. You'd have you'd have a hat you wore. You'd have a sucker you wore. Like some dumb nothingness. What about, what about Columbo? Columbo was oh, he wore a rain jacket everywhere, so that was a oh, big right. deal. He was, like, okay. always, he was always wearing that 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 London fog rain jacket. He was always uh, he was always he drove around an old pile of shit car, which was which was sort of his hook. And then at the end, when he was leaving, he'd always stop and turn around and say. Wait one minute. That's how you knew the dude was busted. So his oh yeah, thing, he said like, uh, oh, just one more question. Right, right. So he's some version. Of that. He'd go, uh, you know, he'd always say to the rich guy, you know, he'd be staying. He dealt with super rich guys, and he's like, I'm telling you, Lieutenant Columbo, my wife drowned in a bathtub, and there's nothing more to it. And he'd go, Yeah, it checks out. I guess it was someone else. And he'd go walking out, and he'd stop by the front door, and he'd turn around, and he'd go. One more minute. Uh, <laughs> your wife, she wore red nail polish because, and then the music would like kick in and that, that the guy knew he was busted at that point. So that was the big, that was the big deal. I've never heard of McLeod. McLeod was Dennis Weaver. Dennis Weaver. It says a New Mexico deputy marshal gets assigned to Manhattan's 27th precinct. He rode a horse down, you know, Fifth Avenue. Okay. All because that's how know. they would do it back then. You know that's what I mean? Fish out of water, yeah. The guy right. literally pulling into the subway on a horse. You know, because, okay. hey, that's who he is. He's McLeod. That's how he gets around. He doesn't know another way. He's a fish finally, out of water. Yeah. Never heard of McMillan and wife? McMillan oh, and wife is. was Rock Hudson. Oh, really? no. Was he the wife? 
<laughs> How dare you? McMillan and wife, was that, that I think that was Rock Hudson. Let's yeah, that was see. another team that solved crime. Wow, I've never another, heard Another like it. Sunday night, whatever. Rock Hudson and Susan St. James. Yeah, McMillan and Beard. I mean, uh, <laughs> all right. Let me hit okay. uh, bet online here. <laughs> Bet online. Uh, yeah, football back full swing. NBA finals. Well, you better get on the in on the NBA finals because it, it could all end tonight as you hear this. Uh, if you might not be able to go to the game, but uh, you still get in on the action at Bet Online Sunday. Games coming up: Raiders at Chiefs, Eagles at Steelers, Cowboys at uh, Giants, McMillan at Wife's. <laughs> Broncos at Patriots, Vikings at Seahawks, Dolphins at 49ers. More options to wager than anywhere else online. And uh, you can do totals. You can do props. You can bet bet the second half. Mike August does that all the time. Head to uh, Bet Online today. Take advantage of all the great sign-up bonuses. Visit BetOnline.ag. Our exclusive partner, Podcast One. Don't forget promo code Podcast One for your sign-up bonus today. Bet Online, your online sports book experts. Yeah. How insulting is it? Usually when you read for the part of wife, it's like an under five. Like you're just there to like say one or two lines. I'm reading for the part of wife, the title right. character. McMillan and wife. Well, still less insulting than Jake and the fat man, right? Yeah, that, well, that's that's aggressive. Dawson, I don't know why I'm looking at you, but didn't we do a, a reenactment where... I believe... <laughs> Yes, there was a reenactment where uh, William Conrad's agent called and said, hey, (laughs) we've got this show called Jake and the Fat Man. And uh, Robert Conrad was like, "Uh, "Okay, who's playing the fat man? Rob Riggle uh, played the the fat man in the reenactment. And he said, so, yeah, you want me to play the role of Jake? Right. And that was the whole thing. And it was hilarious. Right. I'll try to find that for another show. I don't know why. That just uh, made me laugh. All right, Gina, let's uh, bring it home. We have our World War II Ooh. veteran on uh, on hold. We don't want to keep you him got waiting. It. Of course. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Grad. 